And in the comfortable Tacoma Dome in Tacoma, Washington. Welcome back, everyone. John Paul Della Camera, along with Seamus Mallon. It's the Duke Blue Devils who come into this game with a 17-5-1 record, going up against the Akron Zip, 17-3-3. And those records count what they have done in the tournament thus far. There's a look at the bench on the Duke side. John Rennie. As Seamus said, his team is favored largely because of their experience, and they have the main guy in John Kerr. That's one of his assistant coaches, Eric Vodder, a former professional player, to John Rennie's right side. Both teams have colors that are in blue and white as we take a look at Steve Parker the other way. As we start off, Akron with the ball. They're wearing the white shirts, white socks, and the gold shorts. Down the left side, John Kerr on the run for the Blue Devils. Plays it into the box. Joy Valenti try to make a run down the middle, but the goalkeeper is right there for Akron. Well, there we already saw a little bit of um, Kerr's pace as he really fought off a defender very nicely and put in a, a quality cross. Uh, and, of course, uh, Duke would like nothing better than to get the early goal if they uh, to help them in the semifinal. And they feel if they can get the early goal against this side, it will um, take them out of whatever defensive posture they may fall into uh, if, in fact, they do that, uh, despite what we heard uh, Steve Parker say. The ball was last touched by the man in blue, number seven, Joey Valenti, and the goalkeeper for Akron, David Zepko, will have it. What a year he's had. 0.76 was his goals against average during the regular campaign. 12 shutouts. He was redshirted last year. And Duke will get it away from Akron, but now the Zips send this one sky high. It goes out of play. Well, Sean, Sean Docking. Yes, Sean Docking uh, not showing an awful lot of composure there, but uh, not an unusual thing for the first minute or two of a match, especially when you know, as he must know, that he's got the toughest uh, player on the field to mark. And he commits a foul there. So Docking under a lot of early pressure as the uh, Blue Devils go to, not surprisingly, John Kerr. What a story in Docking Lashley, who was their high scorer. Steve Parker switched him to the back, and he's done quite well there. On the restart, we'll have a free kick coming up. And it will be Brian Benedict, number 11, or number 7, Joy Valenti. Let's see. Benedict lets it go. Now they leave it for Curran, and they hit a four-man wall. Ball is deflected upfield. The Zips try to bring it back, but it is knocked all the way back by Robert Probst. Clear it upfield by Kelly Weddock, who has started in every game in his college career for Duke. Duke in blue with it is Everett Harper. And we've got another foul call. We're in the opening oh, minutes of play. Unofficially, 42-55 to go. First half from Tacoma. Long ball on the right side, intended for Benedict, and played right back to the keeper, Zepko. David Zepko from Westfield, New Jersey. 5'8", 150 pounds. Waiting for some movement. Sends it long. Winning that ball, though, that time was Hardway, number two. Ackman looking for it. The Blue Devils send it. Intended for Kerr, but he was breaking wide, and the ball was played into the middle. Swept away the other way by Matt Smith. Ackman sending it down to the right side. Racing for it in the corner. Derek Gaffney. Gaffney makes a nice cut. Sends it low. Deflected out. And now banged out of there by Everett Harper. He was looking for Kerr. That hopped over him. And Akron recovering it at midfield. Center field for Roderick Scott. He is fouled. A lot of fouls in the opening minute, Seamus. Yes, but uh, you do get that, uh, especially when players start to play very fast before they really have much control uh, of the game. Uh, very often what you, as a coach, want to see players do is to take a little pace out of the game, but there's a tremendous amount of youthful exuberance and energy, and it usually manifests itself with a lot of fast and furious play in the first five minutes or so, first five or ten minutes. Derek Gaffney is number eight. That's Graham Edison, number seven. The ball is played into the box and headed out of there by Hardware. Back into the zip zone. And now it comes back to the left wing side. Yes, first time! trying to play it through, broke it up. John Kerr leading it for Everett Harper. A tackle made there, and we've got a player down, and that's Kerr holding it on his right ankle. He's in some pain. Back the other way, though, the zips in the box. It is swept away by Kelly Weddock on a nice defensive play, but Kerr is down near midfield, and now, just now, starting to get up. Well, Mark Everson, number seven for Akron, with the heavy tackle in there on Kerr, and uh, apparently fair tackle. Ball in the box in a dangerous spot, headed out by Kelly Weddock to the right-wing side. Benedict's pass for Kerr. And 
now it's taken away. Number seven, Graham Emerson. And now it goes out of play. It'll be a throw in coming up here for the Duke Blue Devils. It is a scoreless tie. Unofficially, we've gone four and a half minutes in the opening half of play. Last year, eight overtimes as UCLA won over American University, one to nothing. Long ball the other way. The Zips trying to get control of it. And now they do. It was settled by Michael Barish, number nine. Played over on the far side, broke out. The Blue Devils look to recover. On the far wing sideline, we've got another foul. The referee, we should point out, John Kennedy, Alex Ivanenko, and Bob Vanderwerker are the linesmen. And Akron will take over. Akron with a free kick. Way short of the midfield line. Played upfield on the right wing side. It was intended for Scott. And now it's played all the way back to the opposite side. And Duke's goalkeeper, Mark Dodd, from Richardson, Texas. He had a good year as well. 1.10 was his goals against average. He had eight shutouts. He'll right foot this one well over the midfield line. Three players up for it. Neither one of them came down with the ball. Duke will get it. Chested down. John Kerr goes down, draws the foul. Well, Looked like a little bit of acting there. Yeah, I think so. Uh, there certainly was some contact. Uh, he lost possession of the ball, lost control of it, and then uh, I don't really know that he was fouled, but we'll take another look at it. There he has it off his chest, tries to pull it back, and uh, he is, uh, the, the boot goes in a little bit high there by Graham Everson, and Kerr went down, and let's see what they do with this set piece. It's in a little bit closer than the last set piece that they had. Kerr is there, so is Brian Benedict. Benedict strikes it first time, puts oh. over the bar. Nice save by David Zepko. I thought that shot was going a little bit too high, Seamus, but it seemed to dip a little bit, and Zepko had to make the play. Well, an intelligent decision by Zepko to touch it over the top because he's never quite sure if it's going there. It was uh, well hit. And we'll take another look. Look at this ball, beautifully struck by Benedict around the wall. If somebody ducks in the wall, decides just to touch it over, wisely so, as was going uh, towards the upper corner. Here's the corner. On the corner, Benedict sends it in. Kerr was waiting for that, trying to head it home, but it's deflected out of play. Throw it coming up for Duke and Brian Benedict, number 11, 38-15, unofficial time. First half of play from Tacoma at Scoreless, the men's NCAA Division I Soccer Championship. Headed up field towards Roderick Scott. He got the boot up pretty high there, but no dangerous play. Now it's sent back the other way. Probst looking. Players going down all over the place. It's getting physical, or it actually has been physical since the opening kickoff. And this ball will sail out of play. It'll be a throw-in coming up for Duke. Tossed in on the far wing sideline. 17 is Tom Stone. Broken up. The zips taken. Looking upfield, they want David Wells, 19. And that one sails out of play once more. So the Blue Devils will have another throw in. We have not seen Neil Turnbull get into the flow quite yet. Yeah, well, he had one very nice uh, deflection of a, a pass that uh, we played out to the right wing that almost resulted in something. That's the first, uh, that's been his only touch so far. Watch out for him in the air. Seven of his 11 goals have come on headers on the left wing sideline. Derek Gaffney from Dublin, Ireland. Giving it out. Ball is struck and blocked by the Duke Blue Devils and it will sail out of play. Roderick Scott giving it the chase. He is a sophomore from Kitchener, Ontario. The Blue Devils boast of an All-American team. Akron is more of a mixed bag. Four players from England, one from Ireland, one from Canada, but a majority are Americans. trying to work it free. Number nine was Michael Barish, broken up. Ball goes out of play once more. There'll be a throw on the opposite side. It is scoreless from Tacoma. We're coming right back. Back to Tacoma. John Paul Della Camera with Seamus Mallon and another foul. The ball belongs to the Zips of Akron. Nine, Michael Barish will put it in play. He is from Stowe, Ohio, and now he may give way to Gaffney. Derek Gaffney, number eight, four goals during the regular campaign. One assist in this NCAA tournament. Let's see what the Zips do here. It is Gaffney who will strike it. Right foots it wide to the far wing side. Headed straight up by Turnbull. Roderick Scott turns but couldn't get the good foot on it. Oh, but he turned so well. Nice. He turned on his man, uh, Robert Probst. Uh, we mentioned at the top as a freshman from Wisconsin, and he turned beautifully on him. Uh, but once again, the, the ball served well in there to the far post where Turnbull played it back in with his strong heading ability. This is the third straight year that the 
in that this tournament has been played indoors. Last couple, it's been at the Seattle Kingdom. They moved it down the highway a bit here in Tacoma. Restart. The ball belongs to the Blue Devils. Wenock sending it long and deep towards the box. Broken up by the Zips and sent out the other way. Mm, beautifully taken there. Nice. Down the left wing side. Gaffney will catch up to it. Joy Valenti there defending. Gaffney takes him outside one on one. Now sends a cross down low. Turn ball to Roderick Scott. Miss kicks it. And a golden opportunity Boy. goes by the wayside know, for the Zips. I think it, it went by the wayside, but you've got to be impressed by some of the intelligent play of Akron up front. Uh, I like their combinations. I like their working for each other. They have a nice team concept already. Yes, they have some good individuals, but the, already you can see the signs of some possible interesting combinations uh, up front. And uh, they certainly have the skill to, to go one-on-one -on -one also. Brian Benedict is fouled after taking that throw in from Darren Olson. Take a look at this pass here now. Very nice back uh, heel, and it's uh, taken beautifully. How look at the nice chest trap, and away he goes with a little flick pass Probst. That's a lot of flair. Sean Docking as we're back on the live action. Sending it dangerously towards his box. It's flipped back. The Blue Devils with a chance, but it's tackled away from Kern. What a great play by number seven, Graham Everson. Yeah. There's some of that tackling we talked about again in the pregame uh, show. They're very, very tenacious inside the penalty area. Very confident of their ability to make those crisp uh, tackles. And uh, that one by Everson saved the day for him. Everson from England is regarded as a tough tackler. And he showed it there. You don't want to have Kerr open in the box if you're an Akron supporter. Well, it's one thing English players learn very, very early on uh, when they begin this game is uh, how to tackle crisply and hard. And so your opponent knows that he's not really going to have a lot of time and will not get away with, uh, with some fancy stuff. You're going to get good hard tackling and the English players are good, clean, crisp tacklers. Unofficial time, less than 33 and a half minutes to go as Brian Benedict takes it. We're in the first half of play, and it's scoreless. Here at the Tacoma Dome, we've got a foul called on Akron, yeah. so the Blue Devils. Nice move by Brian Benedict, though. Very uh, skillful piece of work over there as he flicked that ball up the air and went by it. Uh, we'll take a look at it again. Look at this little dodge. Uh, flicked it off his opponent's knee and then went by him. I'd like to see that kind of flair. hope to see more of that from American players. Ball is played in toward the box. It was intended for Kerr. It goes straight up. Graham Everson gave it back almost to Kerr. Gaffney in the help out. Upfield for Roderick Scott. We've already seen some nice moves in the part of Scott from Ontario. Now for Gaffney, he had run a long way from the back to join that group, and it's kicked out of play. A critical tackle out there at that time by Joey Valenti. Uh, if he didn't make that tackle, it would have been a very, very dangerous situation indeed as Akron was coming forward with some numbers. Everson right near midfield has slowed down, so he'll play it back to Sean Docking, just a junior. He is also from England. To the near sideline. Headed, but it goes out of play. Last touch by Tom Stone from Irving, Texas. So a throw-in coming up for the Akron Zips. Docking will be taking it. 32-08 unofficially. First half of play here at the Tacoma Dome. And it's scoreless. Ball is tossed back to number four, Matt Smith. He is a junior. Another one of those players that Steve Parker has from England. Back to Smith, now the Zips settling it, slowing it down. Now they play it up for Docking, almost a collision there. Docking really went after that ball. Now it's cleared up field by the Blue Devils. 17 is Tom Stone. Stone and Roderick Scott. They're not taking any prisoners out there. No, but There's no score here at the Tacoma Dome. We've got about 31 minutes to go, first half. Back at the Tacoma Dome, John Paul Della Camera and Seamus Mallon. It's scoreless as Sean Docking plays it up. It's Akron and Duke. Duke in the blue. Akron in the white and the gold. Harper's pass. Docking blocked that one. It was intended for John Kerr. Kerr will have a lot of attention today, both from his teammates and the opposition. Joey Valenti, nice play. The freshman from Tampa won that ball. Now up for Kerr. It's blocked by Docking. He's going to try to stick to Kerr as best he can. Down the left side, quick counter. The Zips may have a chance here. Gaffney, though, has his pass go behind his man. And that slows things down. It's Pat Nash, son of the one of the assistant coaches. Yeah, not a very good combination play there by Nash, though. 
Astor Gaffney had done some very intelligent work of, of running off the ball and did not get the quality return ball that he should have gotten. Stone tries to give and go with Benedict, and there's a nice defensive play by Bellish. Up for Scott. Roderick Scott. Great move. I like this player. Well, you're going to like him for a while because he's only a sophomore. This Akron team is going to get that respect that Steve Parker says they haven't been getting. A lot of their attack is based up front where two players are freshmen and Scott is the older player as a sophomore. So they're going to be around for a while. And heard from, you can be sure of that. Long ball down the left wing side. Zips trying to settle it down. Three is Turnbull. He's taken off the ball up the right side. Benedict getting the feed from Harper. Brian Benedict from Coral Springs, Florida. Leads for Valenti. Knocked out of play. Last touch by the Zips Gaffney. Throw it for Valenti. He has Everett Harper, number 20, over by him. Now Harper's going to, in fact, take the throw. And remember, he has that long throw, and we saw that on our highlights in our pregame feed for you. It resulted in a Kerr score. It's headed out this time by the Zips. Benedict didn't get that ball the way he wanted to, and the Blue Devils lose possession. Zips try for Scott. Robert Scott double teamed on that sideline. That's the kind of respect that they're showing for him right now. Well, they're fouling him a little bit, too, and he's uh, gotten away with a few things on his own, but uh, I like the way he takes the ball. He shows himself well. He takes the ball well. He lays it off well, and other times he'll show a little bit of individual flair. Oh, not a bad, good, uh, not a good pass in there by uh, Nevison. 17 is Tom Stone. 15 goals this year for Stone. Unheralded because Kerr gets a lot of the attention because of the great stats he has put together. Right side for Benedict. Now outside of the box, waits in a scoreless tie, 28-39 to go, unofficially in the first half of play. Harper, tough tackle, and a foul. Yeah, Matt Smith with a foul there. Good to see a defender, though, coming up like that. Everett Harper to... Uh, to try to beat a man one-on-one, -on -one. and there's the obvious foul as he gets his legs across the knees before touching the ball, and clearly the attacker going down before the ball is played by the defender, so a free kick award. Now, Benedict is going to take this one. He, This is exactly the position from which he set up the first goal in the semifinal against Harvard uh, when, of course, Kerr ran onto it to the near post. Sends this one far side. Kerr got a piece of it, and now it's banged out of there. Intended for Scott. Sweeping it away, Kelly Wedock, but it's headed back upfield by the Zips. It's almost as if Akron is trying to prove uh, the rap against them about being defensive. They're coming out strong down the right wing side. Here they come again. David Wells. And it is lost out of play, so there'll be a goal kick coming up. One of Duke's problems uh, so far, as, as far as I can see, is they, they really uh, are struggling to advance the ball from their back four forward. Uh, there have been a lot of sort of aimless uh, boots up the middle or long uh, searching balls, and they're not uh, combining as well from the back through the midfield uh, as is the Akron team. Akron looking a little bit more composed side in this first to 50 minutes so far. Okay. Akron with it, right at the midfield line. Benedict got a piece. Valenti couldn't get it. Look at this for Roderick Scott. Roderick will take it wide to the right side as the Zips converge toward the box. Scott trying to cross it. What a nice play. And they'll get a corner kick out of that. He took on two players and forced the corner. Well, good defense by that man on your screen. Uh, number six, Kelly Weddock doing the sweeping job as uh, Bob Probst uh, was isolated one-on-one -on -one out there, which is perilous against Roderick Scott, I'll tell you. And uh, Weddock did the right thing. He did not stay in the middle, which a lot of sweepers sometimes do. He went right out there to back up his man, uh, his defender under trouble and therefore was able to uh, block the shot away. A substitution coming in. Number two is Corey Sensky. He's a sophomore from Washington, Pennsylvania, and he's going to replace Derek Gaffney. That's an interesting substitution indeed. Uh, Gaffney, you see on your screen there, coming off. Uh, I must say, uh, Gaffney made a very nice impression in the press conference that we had two days ago out here. We'll talk a bit more uh, about that later. From the corner, the zip sent it low, and it's cleared away by Tom Stone. But the zips get it back. Sensky's position is listed as a defender, and Gaffney is more of a midfielder, so we'll see. We'll watch it. We didn't see Gaffney get hurt out there, and he appeared to be going off as a substitute without any real problems. Well, he's a midfield general. It could very well be that uh, Steve Parker, a little unhappy with what's happening uh, in midfield there, may want to talk to his, his uh, experienced midfield general about things like that. 25-42 to go, unofficially first half of play, and it is scoreless. 
Duke Blue Devils and Akron will be coming right back. Mark Dodd's boot sails high and long, headed up by Harper. I got it, no, you got it. And now finally the Zips control on the right side. That was the new player, Corey Sensky, who came on. Now it's Valente over there on the far side with Tom Stone, and the Blue Devils settle it down. Blue Devils, this is their sixth appearance in the NCAA tournament. In the last seven years, they've been consistent. So have the Zips. They've been in the NCAA four times, although Akron has never gotten this far. Well, the skilled players up front are Duke, uh, for Duke are simply not seeing the ball in the way they want to. Kerr and Benedict uh, are dangerous players. Brian Benedict has got some wonderful skill on the ball. Tom Stone, a very good finisher on the other side, too. Uh, but they're simply not getting the service and, and the attacking support out of midfield as Duke really has not quite got uh, into, the, into the flow of play here yet in the way they'd like. Good ball from Scott on the left wing side for Michael Barish. Barish taken down, looks to get back up and play the ball, and now it's knocked out by Weddock. Scott showing that he can take players on one-on-one, -on -one, but he's also uh, able to pass that ball away. He put that ball into open space, and Barish reacted rather well. This might be a long throw-in from the substitute. Corey Sensky, two goals during the regular season. Speaking of a long throw, right there in the box, he was looking for Turnbull, missed kicking at that time was David Wells, he had a chance. And now Kerr, fighting to win it back for Benedict. Wysensky putting on some pressure, and the ball is played back to Mark Dodd. In the playoffs, he's had one shutout and a 1.0 goals against average. Another long kick for Dodd. Harper was going up strong, but didn't get it. The Zips do. Barish headed back the other way, but the Zips will get it back. Strong header that time by Darren Olson of Duke. Now the Zips. Couldn't quite control it on that side. And it goes out of play. There'll be a throw in coming up. The Duke players are winning a lot of these challenges in their own half of the field, uh, getting up well or beating an opponent to the ball. But then what they do with it is really uh, considerably less impressive. Tom Stone trying to cut it to the inside. He's broken up. Stone still fights for it, but the Zips will win it in a scoreless tie. 22-58 left in the first half. That's unofficial time. Duke will get the ball back. Right wing. Valenti. That's a tough play on the near sideline by Mark Pfister from Rexville, Ohio. Boy, look at this. Talk about commitment in the tackle coming in there at number six in uh, Mark Pfister. And the uh, referee decided it wasn't a foul as a throw-in, but this one is a foul. Once again, the dangerous Benedict. Let's see if this time he goes near post, and we'll keep an eye out to see what kind of a run John Kerr makes. There may be some decoy runs for him. Referee Kennedy was just warning Everson. Yeah, Everson, as I mentioned, English player, tough tackler. Let's see uh, what, what happens with this free kick now. Lots of players at the far post. Benedict goes that way, far side. Headed straight up, but it goes wide. And it looked like the last player that touched it was Carl Williams at number 21. We have another substitution, and Mr. Gaffney is going to be coming right back in there. So we got some words from Steve Parker, and we'll see who's coming out. Looks like Barish. And it is. Michael Barris comes out, so Gaffney will be back, presumably in that midfield area, with some instructions from head coach Steve Parker. Steve Parker's record, 70 wins, 19 losses, 14 ties in five years at Akron. Overall, 142 wins, 59 losses, 17 ties. His alma mater, Keene State in New Hampshire. And Duke on the other side, John Rennie. His overall record, 169 wins, 79 losses, 26 ties in 15 years of coaching. It's an outstanding record. The ball goes out of play on that far wing sideline. Throw in coming up for 21, Carl Williamson from Ole, Pennsylvania. Eight goals during the regular campaign and four assists. And of course, uh, while at Keene State, uh, Parker came up against John Rennie before when John was the coach at SMU's, that is Southeastern Massachusetts University, not the SMU in Texas. And in fact, uh, I myself coached the team against John Rennie down when he was down at How'd SMU. You do? uh, well, he scored a goal. <laughs> I was going to guess you lost because yes. you didn't bring it up. No, we lost. You didn't uh, give me the result, so. Uh... In fact, that was my first introduction to John Rennie when he was coaching that team down in New Bedford at SMU, and it was a wonderful team. Lots of uh, Portuguese American players from around that area who played wonderful, skillful soccer it was a treat to play against him in fact and I was uh, at, a, at his early age in coaching I found him a very impressive man on the sidelines and obviously he's got on to greater success with Columbia and Duke. 
Back up field, the Zips reverse it the opposite way. But a nice run back by 21 Williamson. For Stone. Still scoreless. Right side, Everett Harper, number 20. Has Benedict with him on the right wing. Kerr starts his run. Good run by Kerr. Lost it off his right foot and would have a tough time. In fact, he will not be able to get it back. Uh, there is one of the problems that these teams were both worried about, and that is the artificial surface. That is a ball that John did not take all that well, to be uh, honest. But on the other hand, on natural grass, he might have had a chance to retrieve it. Um, and they're both concerned about not just the artificial surface, but the particular quality of this artificial surface, which frankly is not that great. It's uh, artificial grass that has been outdoors for quite a bit, and it's a bit uh, weather beaten. Harper will take it to the right side. We're going to talk more about this turf in just a moment. Right now it is Benedict, and it's knocked out of play. I was going to say, Akron has only played one game in artificial turf in the last couple of years, and they beat Worcester College of Ohio. That was last year, not this past season. On the opposite side, uh, it was, what, a 4 nothing loss on the part of Duke against Virginia in their only appearance. A whistle before all of that took place, and there was a foul inside the box. So Duke is not used to playing either on... Uh, the artificial turf, and, and given the choice, the players would prefer to go outside. Yes, I think they would indeed. Well, here's this long throw in again from Harper, causing lots of problems, but a foul uh, as Kerr, I think, had pushed off against his man uh, before the ball had reached the penalty area. The referee had a good spot to see it and gave the uh, free kick out to, to Akron. And a throw in from the throw in now coming up. Number four, tossing it in for Duke, it's Robert Probst from Brookfield, Wisconsin. He is just a freshman. And while Duke does have a lot of seniors on their team, they have other players that are going to be heard from. Joey Valenti in particular, only a freshman. Ryan Benedict the same. Another foul on Akron. That time, number three is the guilty man, Mr. Turnbull. Neil Turnbull, 11 goals this season. He's got two in the playoffs. He is from Fairham, England, 6'3", 170. A great size to be playing up front. Brian Benedict putting it in play at scoreless, 18.20 to go. Sends it curling to the far side, and Stone couldn't quite get up in time. But corner kick was, yeah, it was deflected out by Gaffney. There'll be a corner kick coming up. There's no score from the Tacoma Dome. Corner kick coming up here. And a scoring opportunity, perhaps, for the Blue Devils of Duke. They'll probably be looking again for John Kerr, their top player. Ball is sent in right in the middle, but it's caught before it gets into any danger by David Zepko. Kerr was doing some uh, fancy moving on that. They were looking for him if they could, but Zepko came right off his line and did the job. Well, now it, uh, it looks as though they have, as you mentioned, made a substitution. Uh, Stone has come out. He has not looked that sharp uh, on the left wing. Uh, Brian Bendick, number 11 for Duke, who's uh, had done some nice things on the right side, has moved at the moment over to the left side. And the new player, number nine, um, Jason Waiter, is in fact the new right wing for Duke at the moment. So we'll see uh, what kind of threat he poses down uh, the defensive left side of the University of Akron. Jason Waiter is the only local player from Everett, Washington, in this tournament. Right side for Scott. Broken up, a long shot, oh. but it's right at Mark Dodd. Good shot. Yeah. Mark Dodd, that's one of his weaker long kicks, but there's a foul called on Sean Dockey. He was right on the back of John Kerr. Free kick coming up. Number nine is Jason Waiter. Well, there's that uh, strong shot in there uh, by number 16. It was uh, Nash, but well taken by the goalkeeper in the fine position there, uh, Mark Dodd. Not seriously threatened uh, so far in this game. Brian Benedict is going to leave it now for Everett Harper who has those long throw-ins. Harper Sr. from Wappingers Falls, New York. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Well, they probably look for Williamson here. Now, Williamson's the fake. It goes over the top. Clear it, but not out. A right-footed shot by Hartwick is blocked and then smacked right out of there by Corey Sensky. Joy Valenti, number seven. From Tampa. Giving it up for Williamson. Now, long John Kerr shot goes wide, and Zepko will wisely let it go. Joey Valenti instrumental in that little flurry of attack as the uh, defense for Duke was able to get, get the ball. Ever see yet another substitution for Duke coming in. That's uh, Barish is back in there for Sensky on one side, and now Duke is bringing Williamson yeah. out. And Todd Mitch has come in, uh, but good linkage there between the backs and the midfield, uh, which has been a little bit shaky uh, in the first part of the game for Duke. Unofficially, 15-22 to go in the opening half of the scoreless. 
for Akron, number nine. Harper, flank it right side for Benedict. Now to Harper. Nice give and go, but maybe a little too far, and it is. But Docking sends this one up into the crowd. Well, it was the right idea, but that ball was just a shade too far in front of Benedict. Harper now will throw it in. Valente, the second man in there. Now it's headed by Gaffney. Left putting it the other way, but it went out of play. Yeah, corner kick, I believe. And there, once again, that high bounce off the artificial surface is what uh, made it difficult for Joey Valenti to do anything with. Uh, but he wins a corner, and Benedict will take it. So no in-swingers by Benedict. He's all right foot uh, from this right position over here. 14.40, unofficial time, first half at scoreless. This one going to the far post. Zepko punches it out, but we've already had a whistle. There was a foul in the box. Yep. Harper, number 20, pushing off on his man as, uh, as this time, again, John Kerr made the early run to the far post, uh, hoping to draw a couple of defenders with him, maybe, and therefore cause some trouble at the back post. Uh, but the foul undid all that work. Zepko is watched by number nine, Jason Waiter. Seven goals during the regular season, eight assists. Now on the right wing side, the Zips bring it upfield. Looking for Scott. Deflected once, and now trying to settle it are the Blue Devils. It's played back to Wedock. Scott almost took it away. Dangerous play. We're going to call this one on Scott. That time, Acker was starting to put some defensive pressure on the Blue Devils. May have shook them up a little bit. Tell you what, the guys that are getting the attention obviously are John Kerr and Neil Turnbull by the stuff that you read about, but I think both of these teams are showing that there are several quality players out there, not just the main attractions. Gaffney flipping it upfield. Zips looking to control it. Some tight marking by Joy Valenti from Duke enables the Blue Devils to get it. And now makes up there, and it was almost taken away by Akron, but on the right side, Harper. Sends it up for Kerr. He leaves it for Valenti. Now Benedict calls for the ball, gets it. Brian Benedict outside, right side for Wainer. Stops it in the box. Sends it across. It's headed away by the Zips. Benedict settled it for the moment, but now it's cleared out again up for Scott. A header to the left wing side. And we've got another foul. Wells was pushed off Allen, number 18, by Darren Olson. the Duke Blue Devils. Darren Olson. A senior from Ann Arbor, Michigan, committing that last foul. Gaffney sending it long towards the box. Headed away, but they may give up a corner. Harper will not be able to catch it in time. Thus, the corner kick coming up, and Bellish will take it. This, uh, at least unofficially by my count, is the second corner for Akron. And we have Tom Stone, who wants to get back in there. Linesman on our side is indicating the substitution. So Stone is going in, and Benedict apparently is coming out. Well, that's a bit of a surprise. Uh, Benedict has looked quite useful virtually every time he's touched the ball. I can't imagine why he would be taken out. Ball is played to Gaffney, short corner. Played right through, save the rebound just came too far away from Sean Docking, but it'll be a corner kick the other way, and that's the first corner that was not directed towards the net, but away from it. Very good shot here. It's deflected off a defender, you see there, and a good last minute to last second reaction by Dodd, touching it away for the corner kick. That one looked labeled for the inside of the uh, far post. Good shot by Gaffney. Derek Gaffney, he's a left footer on this side, and he'll probably swing it in. As he does, to the middle, punched out by Don. Settled on the right side. A quick shot, though, is blocked. And it will sail out of play. I believe it was last touched by Duke. That's the third straight corner kick coming up for Akron. It is still scoreless here in the opening half of play. Gaffney sending it in long, but it's headed right out of the box. Headed out by Duke's number four, Robert Probst from Wisconsin. Throw-in coming up for the Akron Zips. 5.08 to go on officially first half of play. Clock will, or should, stop with two minutes to go, and then the official time would be kept on the field. We're a few minutes away from that. Roderick Scott, nice bit of juggling. Puts it into some space. Everson cranks it, but it goes wide. And again, I think the TV audience, Seamus, continues to get a good look and a good impression of Mr. Scott. Well, we're looking at Everson there with the, the shot. who uh, has been very involved in a lot of the play. But you're right. I think Scott is indeed the man, uh, the exciting man to watch on this team. He has played for the National uh, Canadian Junior Team. He was born in England. Um, and he obviously is a citizen of Canada. And uh, he is... A very fine player on this side, and uh, 
is the kind of guy who uh, can really give you that uh, that goal just when you really need it. That is when a lot of other players are beginning to get tired, looking at the clock saying, well, four minutes to go. Uh, we'll take it easy for the last uh, part of the half. He's the kind of explosive player who can suddenly cut in behind the defense, beat a couple of players, and uh, give your team a one nothing lead. Probst will throw it in. Waiter makes the nice move to the middle. Jason Waiter from Everett, Washington. Nice cut. Trying to play it through. He was looking for Kerr, but it's knocked away by Docking. Headed back by Darren Olson for Valenti. He heads it. Blocked by Everson. Valenti tries it again. Blocked by Gaffney. Who wants it? Valenti says, I'll take it. And here he comes. Picked off. But Valenti stays with it. Nice play. Valenti leading it just off the mark intended for Waiter. But how about that, Jim? It's busted play. And then they try something. Busted again. And they just kept going. Well, you've got to have players who uh, just simply don't quit when uh, to get that kind of play. And Van Valenti uh, is one of those players. But what an energy level from probably. I mean, he's got to be the smallest player on the field. Yep. Down the left wing sideline now. Turnbull. Double team. Should be a corner yep. kick. Yes. Corner kick coming up. There's no score between Akron and Duke. Corner kick to be taken. Gaffney is over there. So is Barish. And Gaffney will strike it hard with the right foot to the far post. Straight up into the air, but we've got a foul called. Foul is on Akron. The guy that you would presume they're looking for is Neil Turnbull because he's so exceptional in the air. Seven header goals out of the 11 that he has scored. Yes, but a ball that's hit that slow, uh, as that cross was, it takes that long to get over. It's, it's going to uh, really put a lot of pressure on the attacker because all the defenders can drop back and get under it. So he's almost forced to sort of nudge one of them or two of them out of the way to try to get a, a jump in. And uh, the linesman actually in a very good position over there to see that push by Turnbull and flag, uh, put his flag up in the air to catch the referee's attention. Um, not that many offensive opportunities in the last 15 minutes or so. And, uh, with two minutes to go here in the first half of goal could be really crucial. Duke with Valenti, number seven, sending it to the far side for Stone. Straight up into the air, it's headed down, but Zepko is there. Still solid, solid defense by Akron. They don't look under a lot of stress, really. They, uh, they cover themselves nicely, they tackle crisply, and uh, they've not really looked under any uh, deal of uh, trouble at the back at all, except uh, occasionally when Kerr has looked as though he might get going on his own. Fair Scott made a nice chest trap, but he was looking for somebody to support him on that run and didn't get it. And Akron ends up losing the ball. Kerr tries to bring it to the inside. Communication gap there, and it almost cost him. It will cost Akron the throw in, but it could have cost him in terms of an offensive break for Kerr. Valenti will leave it for Harper. Time winding down in the first half. They're still running the scoreboard clock. They didn't stop it at two. It's down to 114. Unofficial time, though. Harper sending it in into the box, headed straight up. And now it's just kicked out by Docking. He had really no place that he could put that one except out of play. Corner kick coming up here for the Blue Devils. Less than a minute to go. First half, it's scoreless. Benedict has been taking those, but remember he was substituted for, so he's not even in there. Looks like Jason Waiter, number nine. Waiter sending it to the middle. Headed out. Blue Devils looking to control it. Now it's Valente to the near sideline. Being forced there. And he forced him out of bounds. Oh, some nice defense that time by Nash, the forward. Pat Nash, forward midfielder, I should say. Six goals during the regular season. Everybody looking for the handball. Yeah. Finally, finally got it. Yeah. Harper now sending it long. Wasted that one. He put that one in too quick, trying to set something up for Kerr. And it was uh, a bad decision, bad pass, badly hit. Uh, Kerr should have been used a decoy there and not uh, the actual receiver. Seconds left. Seven, at least on the scoreboard clock. Valente will intercept it. Seconds and the horn sounds ending the first half of play. A lot of fouls, not a great deal of offensive opportunities, but quite a few corner kicks, and the people here seem to enjoy it. We're here at the Tacoma Dome here at halftime. Stay with us because coming up next is the Missouri Athletic Club in St. Louis, Missouri, giving their award for the nation's top collegiate soccer player. We'll be back. 
at the Tacoma Dome at scoreless between Duke and Akron. John Paul Della Camera with Seamus Mallon and a look at the stats from the first half. Pretty even, actually, uh, except in the foul department where Akron has committed quite a few more. Almost twice as many shots for even 8-7. to seven. No goals, as you know. Saves uh, one for Duke, four, uh, two for Akron, and corner kicks uh, nine between them. Uh, so it's been a pretty even match, really. Now, these statistics, I think, do tell a good story. Uh, Akron has looked a little bit more adventuresome in some of their combination play around the penalty area, but uh, Duke has had some good chances, too. There's a look at our winner of the MAC special award that was given out this year as a top collegiate player, John Kerr Jr. There's John Kerr Sr. Not a bad player in his own right. He did very well in his professional career and now is a player representative, not a player representative, I'm sorry, he's the head of the Major Indoor Soccer League Players Association. He also coaches a team down in the Virginia area. Duke and Akron are scoreless right now as we get set to start the second half of play. You get that feeling like you do in many of these outdoor soccer games that this goal, whenever it is scored, is going to be a big one. The last few years have not been high scores, especially in this NCAA final. Last year, just one goal that won it for UCLA. Second half underway, Sean docking for Scott. Roderick Scott doing some dancing. Now double teamed. He's going to be a marked man in the second half. Or Duke may live to regret it. He was very uh, reminiscent in his, some of his running style of Elvis Comrie. Player used to play for the University of Connecticut before going on his professional career. Quite a talented player, too, I think, um, and who became a much more disciplined player in the professional ranks than he had been in high school, or in college, rather. And uh, this man, uh, Scott, shows me uh, some of those kinds of skills that uh, Comrie had. Here's Brian Benedict. He was substituted for in the latter stages of the first half, but he's back on. He had been another player who looked pretty impressive, especially with his work weight. Darren Olson strikes it long, no one near it, yep. except for Turnbull. Well, that's been a little bit of the problem for Duke, that the first pass coming out of the back has not had an awful lot of uh, sophistication to it. Look how deep Turnbull was, too. Now Scott playing up. Turnbull has not been able to get the ball where he's wanted it, anywhere near that box for a majority of this game. And we're in the second half of play. Unofficially, about a minute and a half has gone by in the second half. Joey Valenti will have the free kick coming up. Two teams have just switched ends this half. We're inside here at the Tacoma Dome. Played into the box. Flicked. It's a loose ball. Shot to score. And Duke's Tom Stone will have the only goal of the game thus far. Well, once again, uh, uh, they've used that set piece to get themselves into a lead. And a very bad mistake uh, by Akron, who has usually looked so tenacious and tough in defense, let themselves down badly there as a long ball was served in. It was headed down. The defense reacted very late, very slowly. Here is the cross coming in from Valenti. Takes a long time to get there. Should be no problem for the defense, but is not tucked away. And there's the chances that comes away. And uh, here we look at it again. Valenti, the long cross. You see it clears a defender and hits a Duke player. Goes over the defense, hits a Duke player right there his leg and Williamson I think it was and there was Stone ready to knock it home after it came away from Carl Williamson throw it now on the opposite side and it goes out of play last touched by Duke so Akron will get it give it to Tom Stone his 16th goal of the season fourth of the playoff or of the tournament I shouldn't use the word playoffs the tournament fourth of the tournament and we have it unofficially in the 47th minute Joe Valenti with the assist but that's one that Akron feels shouldn't have happened. I'm sure they do. Matt Smith, who rose to try to head that ball away, did not quite get to it. Um, uh, the other player who's been so good for them at the back there, Sean Docking, was not the one going. And as a result, it went over uh, Smith, and it sort of caromed into Williamson. Uh, he didn't really pass it. It just sort of hit him. And uh, all of a sudden, it popped out in front for Stone, and he just buried it in the roof of the net uh, for that critical first goal that you're talking about. They're looking for John Kerr, but it's broken up. Everson kicking it upfield. Hardwick got a piece of it. And now it's knocked out of play by Darren Olson. Let's see what this does now as far as the tempo of the game is concerned. See if... Akron gets a little bit rattled if they just keep going after him. Because now, more importantly, if they were thinking defensive at all before, they can't do that right now. They need a goal to tie as we look at Steve Parker and crew on the Akron bench. On the 
restart. Sent long into the box. The goalkeeper down, missed it, and Hardwick flicks it off with a header. I'll tell you what, Duke got a good break that time. Off a ball that was misplayed in the box. Otherwise, that could have been a 1-1 tie in short order. And slipping on a piece of that, uh, what appeared to be a bad piece of that carpet, was Akron's number four. Be safe and punch it! Matt Smith. We'll have a throw-in coming up from the near sideline. And it's Akron Sean Docking with us. We had a quick look at John Rennie on the Duke bench. You couldn't tell who was winning. Both coaches have the same expression. Well, John got uh, what every coach loves to get, which is a goal right after the half, either just before the half ends or right after the half. It's a terrific morale booster. And uh, there's still a long way to go, a good 41 minutes still for um, Akron to get back in this. They have the talent up front to do things, but uh, they've, they've really got to uh, keep going, keep keep composed, and let's just see uh, how composed they are. Pat Nash sends it in. It's headed, but just wide of goalkeeper Mark Dodd. It is 1-0 in favor of the Duke Blue Devils here at the Dome in Tacoma, Washington. Back at Tacoma, it's a 1-0 lead for Duke. Ball headed by Docking and Harper. Harper stayed with it, was held by Everson. And now it's Duke with the ball with Valenti. Unofficial time of that goal, 47th minute. Give it to Stone, 16th overall from Valenti. Nash being forced back by Stone. Sends it up the near sideline, but it goes out of play. Quick throw in for Benedict for Williamson, and now back for Brian Benedict. Plays it all the way back. Kelly Weller from Richardson, Texas. Long ball, two players go right up for that one. Everson won it, but he'll lose in the overall war to Harper. Now Akron will get it right back. Played into space, knocked away, but nothing. Quick move. What a burst. The linesman had his flag right up, right up as soon as that ball was passed. But again, you saw the quickness of a Valente. Not only does he break up the play, but were that not offside, he was going to set up a potential scoring opportunity. Sean Docking, number 10. Right back to his goalkeeper, David Zepko. This Akron team, 10 starters return from last year. We mentioned four players are from England, one from Ireland, one from Canada. Had two key losses, but they've replaced them. On the far sideline, Nash looking for it. Gives it to Everson in the box. Turnball almost got free for a nice flick, but the goalkeeper Dodd was right there. But that shows you how quick and how dangerous Turnbull can be even when that ball wasn't quite where he wanted it. Well, he made a good run in front of John Hardwick, and he came from behind him and cut in front of him. Uh, but uh, couldn't quite control the way he wanted to. But his every touch up front is dangerous, and as long as they have him up front, they're going to have trouble. Here's a break for them. Gaffney down the left side, pushed it too far in front of him. Well, he's going to be upset about that. He lost control of that. Don't know if it's because of the surface or what, but he had a great chance and just uh, made a mess of it. On the right side, now it is Akron again. Hard shot, just too high. I thought perhaps the goalkeeper got a piece of it, but he did not because there's a goal kick coming up. Emerson really cranked that ball. Number seven for Akron from England. He is just a sophomore, so he's going to be around. Let's go, Blue. Let's go. And you can bet that both Akron and Duke, they'll be back. Duke will have a tougher time perhaps in replacing a player like a John Kerr because he's an impact player. But the way John Rennie is recruited, you may find another one pretty soon, or he may already have that player. Throw in coming up for the Blue Devils. Number 21, Carl Williamson, a senior. Eight goals this year. Headed away by Emerson. It goes out of play again, a throw in coming up. 37 and a half to go unofficially in the second half of play. And again, the ball goes out of play. So Williamson will try it again. A few more strides closer. Up for Benedict, showing for the ball, but it's blasted out of there by Matt Smith, number four. Off of Scott. Banged right back by Kelly Weddock. First down. Everson and Benedict go for it. Benedict in some traffic, wheels and tries to deal, broken up. Now it is the Zips coming back. Nash making that pass, and now it's cleared over on the right side. Played out for Everson from Fister. 
Everson. Right sideline. Look at Scott trying to get around the last line of defense. This well, be a foul. Yeah, Everson uh, dribbled himself into trouble there. He had some help. He didn't release it in time. And by the time it was, uh, he wanted to release it, the opportunity was gone. So some good interpassing through midfield that comes to no good end for uh, Akron. They, as I mentioned, they've got plenty of time yet. They still have the talent to do it. But uh, Duke really is in full flight now. They have a terrific advantage of a goal. They know with uh, one more, and they could essentially wrap up the title. Ball is played back to the keeper, and Zepko will try to get Eckerd back into some decent position. 36-12 unofficially in the second half of play. And it's a one thing lead for the Blue Devils of Duke. Ball is kicked up field by Williamson, intended for Kerr. Docking heads it up the other way. And another foul. Yeah, a little bit pushed by Valenti there and Gaffney. Free kick coming up. Sean Docking will be the one to take it. We're indoors here at the Tacoma Dome in Tacoma, Washington, where they played indoor soccer. They also have had some hockey games in here, exhibition hockey. Some football indoors as the ball goes knocked out of play. And, of course, this outdoor soccer championship. Quick, hard shot. Very low and scooped up by Dodd off the shot from Mark Fister. Started all 81 games in his collegiate career. The last two, Sheamus, with a broken left wrist. And his shot wasn't that good, but he got away from his man uh, in uh, nice style. On the far sideline, Kerr. That ball headed for nowhere except out of play, and there'll be a throw-in coming up for the University of Akron. Sean Docking over there to take it. Looking for Gaffney. Valente all over him. Too much, in fact, all over him, and there's a foul. We had 25 fouls in the first half, and we may equal that in the second half based on the way it has started in the first 10, 10 or so minutes. Ball is kicked off of Kerr. Now played up the left sideline. Scott, had he been able to get by, could have been causing some problems for Duke. Tough hit that time. Everson ran right into Kelly Weddock. That might be a card. That might be it. Well, they're not going to call anything, but... Let's see, Seamus. Well, he went in uh, a little bit late. Uh, you could say he was challenging for the ball, but by the time he decided to make his challenge, it's pretty obvious that he wasn't going to get it. And uh, that's why the referee quite properly has called it a foul, and uh, a very dangerous foul indeed. I think it needs almost a yellow card offense, uh, so he got away with it. I don't think that angle showed it uh, quite the way I saw it, the way it first happened. No, I think you're right. Uh, he was a little tough from that angle. And what, what's always so difficult, uh, frankly, on replay sometimes is to get the longer run to see the intent of the yeah. player um, and uh, you, the uh, capsule replay sometimes doesn't always uh, give you that uh, understandably and, uh, very obviously he didn't have the chance uh, to get that ball but still made the commitment Whoa. now that's a third foul in a row by number seven um, really dishing it out a little bit for a short guy Gaffney's asking Gaffney. for a card I think he's right I think he really should be complaining to the referee there and if they don't start issuing the cards it may get worse Harry you saw that bad foul from behind my remark in the beginning of the game was you're taking no prisoners and uh, they've kept that up look at this two more players going down and now I think I think he may pull a card yeah now he's going to do it Mr. Kennedy says that's enough. Yeah, uh, John Rennie, uh, I think, understandably upset uh, that maybe this player shouldn't uh, should have been warned before this. Graham Everson, we mentioned very early, a tough, hard tackler. Some of his tackles of late have been more than tough and more than hard. Uh, they've uh, gone over the top, as they say. And uh, the Akron player is upset because they don't feel they're getting a break on the way that uh, Valenti has been clattering into people, particularly into Gaffney. Ball is played upfield now. Kerr wanting to turn. Docking, nice tough defensive play. Kerr with some elusiveness is going to get it back. What a play by Docking on the tackle. For Emerson on the right side. Try to pull it back. Good pressure put on by the Blue Devils. The entire ball must go out of play. They're going to say that it did. With his break in the action, it is 1-0 in favor of Duke. We'll be coming right back to Tacoma. Throw in coming up from the near sideline. Nash will take it for Akron. And again, Valente fouling Gaffney. Gaffney's upset. 
And you can hear the official, or at least I can from up here, John Kenny said, let's settle it down. Well, he's yelling at Gaffney uh, because Gaffney got a little irritated and retaliated, but he's, yelling, he's picking on the wrong guy. Valenti is the culprit here, and he's getting away with it. John Kerr does a nice turn, and he's clipped from behind that time by Gaffney. And that's probably a little frustration on Gaffney's part because he was given the warning before, and he, he didn't feel that he should have been the one. Well, I noticed that Everett Harper has now just gone over to Valenti to tell him to calm down a little bit, so uh, there's really no need for any of this stuff. These are two skillful sides. They don't need this kind of play. Farish knocks it away from Kerr, and John Kerr will have to throw it. Congratulations to John Kerr for winning that MAC award, which the MAC is hoping will be similar to the Heisman Trophy in football. And in all fairness, uh, all candor, John Kerr has not had a very good game, to be perfectly blunt. In fact, he's had a rather poor game. Um, and uh, hasn't, uh, although he's had a superb season, unquestionably, he has not shown us tonight uh, what he's really capable of. For Akron number 13, Tommy O'Rourke comes in as we look at John Kerr number 10. Who at this point, we don't believe, even knows that he won that award. The award was done here uh, through television, so I doubt that he's been told. It will be presented to him in St. Louis on January 12th at a luncheon. Ball is cleared upfield, and the goalkeeper, Dodd, will have no problem in letting that one go by. Unofficially, 31 minutes to go in the game, and perhaps in the season for Akron, unless they can muster up the tying goal. Wedock will be kicking it. Chested down, on the run comes Fister. Fister strikes it the first time, nobody home at that far post. But keeping it alive as well as playing it back in the middle, Valente flicking it towards the near sideline. And unable to control it that time was Gaffney, although he made a nice play. Uh, actually, that was Fister. Fister, number six. Yes. I'm very protective of players from Dublin, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you ready to jump at me, so I knew I had the wrong guy. Number seven is Valente. Oh, beautiful play by Valenti. For Williamson, broken up. Akron with it. Number seven is Everson. I think he wanted Nash to break down that right side. Nash was wanting to make sure he stayed on side. Now Docking plays it into some space for Gaffney. Broken up by the goal scorer, Tom Stump. That was Fister again. I'm sorry. Was it? <laughs> Six and eight. Yeah, you're right. It was. I see Gaffney now. That's right. He did not receive the ball very well. Lost it. You know what I should look at is the left the wrist, wrist because yeah. he's, got the, that's right. he's got the cast on. Numbers Shame are on me. a little hard to pick up out there, too. It's But some nice... Uh, oh, well, here's a good opportunity. Now, let's see what Gaffney can do with this free kick. Uh, they've got some players up front. You sure that's Gaffney? I'm just teasing. <laughs> Gaffney will play it. <laughs> Setting it in low, it's headed out by Probst. Kept alive. A Fister shot that seemed to rise a bit, but the goalkeeper Don is right there. Fister didn't even touch the ball, it seemed, in the first half of play, but he's had several touches, Shamus, yeah. in the second half. That's right. He had uh, very little to do in the first half. Uh, I think uh, mainly because uh, Stone uh, wasn't really doing much uh, as his opponent. And there we see another uh, end of the field angle here as... Uh, Kerr just sort of touches that one away. Here's the shot by Fister coming up. He puts it down for himself nicely, gets around it, and uh, it's nicely and comfortably taken by Mark Dodd. Upfield intended for Scott. A collision there. Scott stays with it, but the Blue Devils take it. Williamson headed straight up. Fister slides it right side, and off Docking's right foot, it goes out of play, and the ball belongs to Duke. Williamson will take it. Well, the last time Duke was here, in 1982, they played Indiana eight overtimes, and they lost it two to one. They're looking to take the national title, and they've got about 28 minutes to continue with their lead, which stands right now at one nothing. Goalkeeper Zepko, who, by being just a freshman, has quite a few more years here. Uh, Foul. Yeah. Dubious, would you say? Well, I, I, I'm a little surprised that he blew it up because the uh, the opportunity was very much in Akron's favor. For the advantage. Yes, for the advantage, right. Free kick coming up for the Zips. They want to talk about it a little bit. Barish, number nine, along with Gaffney. 
touch to Gaffney, chipped into the box, headed down, and the foul as we have Harper going down. Yep, no, Harper did Dockett. a good job uh, getting the challenge in there against Turnbull, and Turnbull pulling him uh, away as he uh, out, was out jumping him. I think that's uh, pretty much what happened. Let's take another look at it again. Watch for 10 docking. Yep. There, obviously, <laughs> Harper going down oh, like a sack of potatoes. Good player, Harper. I like him. He's a skilled got a lot of uh, energy and of course that lethal long throw which is, uh, was so useful to them in the first half and in uh, their semifinal match. This game means a lot to Harper. He's a senior. This is his last crack at a national crown. Same thing with John Kerr and others. Brian Benedict who will have more chances. He's just a freshman. Curls it in. We've got a whistle and apparently an offside. Not too many of those here tonight. John Kerr made a run behind the defense uh, just as the ball was being struck. Uh, defense pulled up a little bit, and he was uh, quite obviously offside. John Kerr, the award winner, 5'10", 150 pounds from Falls Church, Virginia, the 1986 ACC Player of the Year. I was going to say, Kerr may have to build uh, another trophy case because he's not through winning some awards. It is Duke 1, Akron nothing. The championships continue in a moment. The Akron zips, and it is number 10, Sean Docking. 26 more minutes in this one. Unofficial time, and Akron needs one to tie. They trail 1-0. This is the men's NCAA Division One Soccer Championship. Once again, trying to restrain that man, Scott. They're committed to foul him, or um, have to resort to foul him. I was going to say that might be the only way to slow him down. Showed some great moves this entire match. Docking, looking now for Scott. Against him is Probst. Nice move on a turn, a couple of them. And then he runs over right up. And the foul's given against him. Well, we're going to take another look. And Let's look, let, watch Weddick's position. Look at Mac Mincemeat out of pro. Absolutely loses him without any trouble whatsoever. Then fl pushes it by uh, the next player, number six, uh, Weddock. There's the first move. Now the little touch away. And uh, you just, the elbow coming up, I think, that's what, that's what, what caused it. But uh, you might say it was obstruction by Weddock or the high elbow. I, I think it was the elbow that, that mm -hmm. was the determining factor. Yeah. But that was a great move. Showing you again how dangerous he can be. They're going to have to watch him right to the closing minutes. Valente now moves it up the near sideline for Benedict. Brian Benedict, nice idea. They find Stone. He and Valente almost run into each other. Stone reversed it into open space, but it wasn't too far open because Akron comes away with it. Emerson lets it get by. Tackles Hardwick down. The referee then got hit with the ball. And fans, fans feel that that's part of the excitement. That's right. <laughs> Docking over the shoulder. Now Kerr pummels the shot, but it's stopped by the goalkeeper, Zemko. A very good shot, chance. though, by John Kerr. Yeah. Keeping it low and uh, where the goalkeeper has to dive to smother it. And uh, Akron caught uh, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and Kerr usually does very well in one-on-one -on -one situations, and you saw the power of the shot. On the right sideline. Yeah. Broke it up. Cleared away. And now Akron getting it back. Four is Matt Smith playing it back to the feet of Zepko. Some good tradition in the part of both of these schools in that several players have made it into the professional ranks, and many more will come from these programs, you can be sure of that. Akron down the left wing side. Taking it deep, it's knocked away. One of the more successful players from Duke, in fact, was Tom Kane. Last year, the Herman Trophy winner, and he's now playing in Germany, second division. Here's a big shot, and that one goes wide of the goalkeeper, Don. So another chance, or a potential chance, goes by the boards as the Everson shot went wide, and now Duke going to the bench. We have a couple of substitutions. Number nine, Jason Waiter, and number eight, Mike Lindenberger. Waiter's been in here before. Lindenberger, a senior from Dallas. No goals this year, but three assists. And I think if John Rennie can, he's going to make every attempt to get every senior into the game. He might have, uh, by my count, two more to try and get in there if he can. This being their last shot at a national crowd. But he knows that this game is not over yet. 22.51 to go. Waiter, tough tackle by Smith. Akron battling on the sideline. It goes out of play. And they're going to give the ball to the Zips. There's Jason Waiter, number nine. As mentioned before, from Everett, Washington. Seven goals during the season. 
Scott was looking for it, headed out by the Blue Devils of Duke. Zips will get the throw in. Fister's toss. For Gaffney. Now to Nash. Almost gave it to the referee. Sean Docking now sending it long for Scott. Some nice juggling. Now he flicks it back. Chest it down. Gaffney in some trouble. You play that one off his hand. No, they're going to call a foul the other way. Foul on Duke. Ball set towards the far post. Dodd comes up, makes the catch. As Akron was sending all kinds of support on that far side. Well, the early taken free kick, uh, always a good weapon there, but uh, full marks to, to Mark Dodd, indeed, for reading that and coming off his line and not uh, panicking and reacting back towards the line as a lot of less experienced keepers might uh, when he sees his defenders not quite in position. But he came out, uh, came out nicely and took charge. Robert Scott. Nice dribbling. Brings it to the inside, then try to poke it through. He wanted someone to break on that left wing. But it didn't work for Akron. Well, he almost uh, had visions of seeing himself uh, in a one-on-one -on -one situation because the other players were distracted by their uh, opponents, and he almost took advantage of it. To get the sense at any moment uh, he can explode and cause that goal, but uh, we got 21 minutes to go, and time is beginning now to run out for the uh, Akron side as Duke begins to control things a little bit more in midfield. That was Lillenberger, number eight, who made that pass. Harper setting it the other way off of the chest of Fister. Good thing, because breaking in on the left wing side was Brian Benedict. Well taken by Fister there, chesting that ball down. Difficult ball to control. Very easy to mess that up and end up uh, handling it, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly Wedock heading it upfield now for Everett Harper. Harper, left foot of ball. That one looked good. But it's broken up by Fister. Benedict, very dangerous on that left wing side. Now to Sean Docking. Docking, one of several players that will be coming back for another year for Steve Parker's Akron team. Uh, foul by Probst again. Trying to work on Probst. Uh, obviously, uh, Robert Roderick Scott, number 18 for Akron, the player that we've admired so much. Uh, being marked by Probst. Probst, a freshman, a tough defender. Is there you see the two of them matched up there? Of the but, back four, uh, he has the least amount of experience. Yeah, and he's got his hands full. Sean Docking gives it up easily. Zips with it. Gaffney, a drive, and that one goes wide. And out of play, so there'll be a goal kick coming up for the sophomore, Mark Dodd. It is still 1-0 in favor of Duke. The road to the championship continues in a moment. Kelly Wedock sending it upfield over the midfield line. Now it's cleared back by the Zips. Gaffney doing a nice job, but it's blocked by Lindenberger. Plays it back now to Fister. Nash looking for Scott, broken up. Stepping right in front was Probst. Throw in for the Zips, who are down to 19 minutes unofficially in their season. They trail 1 0. Played on the bounce. Turnbull couldn't find it, and now it's cleared out of there in a hurry by Darren Olsen. Flicked back by Sean Dockey, now on the left wing sideline. The Zips control it. Looking to go forward and get that equalizing goal. Broke it up by Weta. Good play by Weta. Just stood his ground and took it away, but now he gives it away. And the Zips with Everson back killing it. It was misread by a teammate. Now it's deflected out of play, and the ball belongs to Duke. Throw in on that far sideline. There's Darren Olson, number 18 from Ann Arbor, Michigan, a senior, 5'11, 155. Sean Docking breaking it up. But now it is the Duke Blue Devils to Kerr. Benedict open on the left wing. Kerr wanting to get it on his right foot, but a nice defensive play back there. Fister, Fister again. yeah. Yep. I had to look for that cast. Fister made a nice play because Benedict was open had Kerr been able to settle it with the right foot. No one was there for Akron. Now on the right side, Waiter has a tackle away. He recovers. Everson gave him a push from behind. And now players get too close. Waiter almost falling for that and drawing something for retaliation when it was Everson who started it, or appeared to start it from up here. Right side is played into the box, headed out. By number nine, Michael Barish, a senior from Stowe, Ohio. 
Well, it's pretty obvious that Everson is a little bit hot-tempered and probably a bit frustrated right now. He mentioned about how tough attacker he was earlier, but uh, some of his game gets away from him at times uh, when he loses his composure. 18, Darren Olson into the box, headed out by four, Matt Smith. And now it goes out of play. Benedict will have it for the throw-in for Duke. He wants John Kerr and finds him. Kerr, number 10, plays it back. Benedict holding it. Harper runs into some space. The ball is played to Lindenberger. Harper, one touch, back for Lindenberger. Wide wing corner area. Kerr sends a low cross. He hit off Williamson. Hard win. Oh, you can see what he wanted to do, but he couldn't do it. And now it's kept alive by Probst, but it goes out of play. Hardwick wanted to cut that ball back. Sheamus get it on his left foot. He would have been open on that side. Yeah, and here comes Stone back into the game. Stone, the goal scorer, coming in uh, probably, I would guess, uh, for number nine for Duke, who's been the, the local waiter. hero. Yeah, waiter. 19, David Wells comes back into the lineup. And let's see. Wells is out there, and O'Rourke comes to the sideline. Fister with a long boot up field. Jason Waiter. So, so Waiter did not go. Yeah, he didn't go. Jason Waiter down the right wing side. Brings it back toward the middle. I'm looking to see if I spot. Well, I still see Williamson out there. Here's Kerr. Right John Kerr, surprisingly, has uh, come out of the game. Yeah. Benedict broke it up. You're up. Now on the left sideline is played back oh. upfield. Here's an uncharacteristic mistake by the uh, Akron midfield. It looked awfully good getting the ball through midfield, uh, but that time they just essentially threw it away. 15 and a half unofficially. Second half of play, one nothing. Duke knocked away by two players, Docking and Everson. But the ball will be controlled by Mark Dodd, the sophomore goalkeeper from Duke. As we look at John Kerr on the bench, what a year he has had. Player of the year. Can you hear that? Everything's long. That will kill some time. And right now, time is more on Duke's side than it is on Akron's. They need to go up the hill and score that tying goal. Throw it on the right sideline. Docking got too physical with Waiter, but it goes out of play anyway. Jason Waiter on the toss. Now he's going to leave it instead for Everett Harper. He of the long throw-in fame. Fake the running start on the throw-in. Now he's going to wait. He has nobody near him. Finally, it's played in. It's flipped once, and now cleared out by Fister. Darren Olson sending it back. Intended for Stone. Headed up by Smith. Kept alive. Williams in the Stone, number 17. Tom Stone, the only goal thus far. Stone trying to bring it back. He's crunched. Hardwick, John Hardwick, takes it to the outside. Wants to cross it. Gets a good one, surprisingly, away. It's settled, but crunched out of play. Last touch by number eight. Mike Lindenberger, a midfielder and a senior from Dallas, Texas. Duke still on top, 1-0 looking for the championship. John Kerr getting a breather and no more. He's going to be coming right back in. If nothing else, I'm sure John Rennie wants the threat of Kerr out there against Akron. Well, he's taking out Brian Benedict, who had a sparkling first half and has not seen very much of the ball in the second half. Wedlock straight up. What a collision that is between Everson and Wedlock. They call that one on Everson. We may need another sheet to keep track oh, of the fouls. I know, and Everson again hurling his body uh, this time smack into Kelly Weddock, who's taken a bit of a pounding a few minutes ago from Roderick Scott's uh, high elbow, and that time from the flying form of, uh, of Everson, who seems to uh, have no fear. Weddock went down even earlier, too, in uh, something that we showed you in a replay where he was crunched one other time, and he came up limping, but he's played the rest of the way. Ball is played upfield. Wedock dishing some of it back as he puts it upfield. Stone looks for it. And going down, can't even see who that player is. But play will it's continue. Yeah. It's Fister, number six. He hurt his, uh, re-injured his uh, wrist, I think. Let's see, there he goes up. And he lands on his wrist, yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't look like there was any give when, when that uh, wrist went down. And now officials the officials have called an injury timeout. And they're going to make Fister come off. 
which has him upset. He's been playing with a broken wrist, his left wrist, the last Fans two games. That kick Talk about a gutsy performance. He didn't want to come out. Uh, but a good decision by Steve Parker. You, you know, you just cannot take risks with uh, young players, with young men. Uh, like that, and he obviously did come down. He saw it very clearly in the replay. He came down hard on that. Now here's uh, once again that man Scott trying to do some damage. Wedock knocked it out. Boy, Wedock's been well, solid at the back. He, yeah. uh, you know, the, the players up front have been all the stars for Duke prior to now, but uh, they really have had an off night up front. Really, a Stone got the goal, of course. But uh, I tell you, with this man at the back for them, number six, Kelly Wedock, has been. Uh, He's on the ball there as he puts it. Ooh, a bad pass almost to hurt there. Uh, but he certainly has uh, done the job back there under lots of physical pressure. Stone bringing it back. Not to take anything away from Stone, but this could easily be still a scoreless tie. Hacker making that mistake. Didn't control it. And then uh, Stone just buried it. Nice shot off the, underneath the crossbar. Up top. Here is Williamson broken up. Akron. Time ticking down. 11.44 to go. National championship at stake. Both teams wanted badly, but right now Duke is in the driver's seat, leading it one nothing on a goal by Tom Stone. The assist to number seven, Joey Valenti, who has been one of the real spark plugs out in the field. He's not been out there uh, much of this half. In fact, the the latter stages, most of this half, he's not been out there. Well, we may see him back. Ball is cleared back now in Akron. Fister's already back. Now Jason Winter on the right side. Against Smith. Plays it into open space. Kerr. Right footed pass. Stone had stopped his run, perhaps thinking he was offside. I think uh, being worried about running offside, but a good, uh, good pass indeed by uh, Kerr. Still 1 0. Duke has the lead. They're looking for the championship. And with Turnball, who has been effectively marked out of this game to this point. But never, never say never in this sport, especially when you have a guy that has as many goals as he's had this year. But he has not been a factor. Now, Tempers firm again. Emerson is over there, and so is Jason Wader. Now, those were the two that almost yeah. uh, went at it before. Everett Harper, though, a great peacemaker, very poised, coming over to, to uh, calm them all down. Yeah. Give and go doesn't work. Good idea, but nicely touched away by Duke. Kerr's pass off the mark. Fister getting a piece of it. Fister's been every place that ball has been in the second half. Defensively and as well as offensively. Throw in by Duke for Stone. He has the only goal. Nice move to the inside. Tackled away from him by Emerson. Stone is down. Slow, very slow to get up. Now it's kicked back the other way. He'll be in an offside position. And is limping back up on his feet. He was offside as that pass was being made because there were not two defenders between him and the goal. Look at that recovery. <laughs> but back up and started to run. And as we show you the replay, something else had happened the other way. Yeah, looks Mike. like Bellish, Barish, Michael Barish is down. Number nine, it looks like. Well, another tough tackle in there by Emerson, and we seem to be saying that just about all night, to not this incident, but the one prior to that that we showed you the replay of, and um, as he won the ball away, he also came in uh, with the tackle on uh, number seven, on uh, Stone is getting a card. Yeah. We were on the replay, and that's what I was looking at, so I didn't see that. If you had to speculate, you might think that it was just a retaliation on Stone's part for that last play where he appeared to be victimized. Yeah, and a good move here, taking him out. Uh, John Rennie taking him out, telling right. him to calm down. Uh, that is a good move. Yeah. And getting a skillful player in his place. That's a very useful thing to do with 10 minutes to go. Got a guy like Brian Bennett in there who can uh, beat a couple of players, take some of the pressure off. Scott has it kicked away. Behind the Blue Devils. 9-10 to go. one nothing. The lead belongs to Duke. Along the near sideline, it goes out of play. Throw in coming up here for Akron. That goal to the zip seems to be getting farther and farther away as time winds down, but they're still in it. They still have a chance. Ball is played back by Lindenberger to Dodd. And Dodd will hold up. 8.44 to go. 
the last thing that John Reddy wants to see is several overtimes like he saw in 82. He doesn't even want any overtime in this one. He'd like to win it right now in regulation. Right now he's got a 1-0 lead. Scott <laughs> makes the catch and he's going to run to the end zone and spike it, I think. <laughs> what, what was that? Well, uh, he was fouled on that, DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, how can they give the ball to Akron? Well, Good just... thing he was fouled. <laughs> well, that would have been a yellow card had he not been fouled. Well, we got eight minutes to go. This may be Akron's uh, one of their best chances. Well, Scott could also probably play wide receiver. That was a nice move. Here's Docking, wanting to turn. He can be dangerous here. But it's taken away. There's that man. He's been magnificent. He's, uh, he's got to be one of the players you think about yeah. for the top defensive player in this game. Yeah, I would certainly think so. He's the top defensive player. Maybe the top player. If they, if Duke holds on to win one nothing, he would get my vote. Watch he, out for Everson. Right there. Yep. As it goes out of play, we're, we're going to have a chance to vote if we fill in these ballots here. But we'll wait. Scott sending it in. Blocked. Clear it up field. But the Zips keep it alive. This time it's knocked away again by the Blue Devils to the near wing sideline. Akron keeps coming, but Duke keeps rejecting. Throw in for Ben Smith. The junior, two goals a season. Over the shoulder, here's Barish. Cross to the far post, and Dodd is there. Look at Docking, how close he was. Dodd, so safe, though, and again in a good position. And composed, good hands. Uh, no, you know, uh, players in the last minutes of the game like that uh, can very easily get jittery, especially a player like a goalkeeper who hasn't seen much of the ball, but so steady and solid, marked on. Uh, Duke is so close to the championship, they can taste it, but here's Akron with an Everson shot. You're not going to score from that distance. But again, maybe a little bit of frustration. This is a good Akron team. It's a good Duke team as well, and they're both going to be back. Uh, some of your neighbors, Seamus, with their faces painted, or <laughs> no, they're Duke fans. And there's uh, quite a rabid bunch here. We're told maybe about 300 alumni from this area, just from the Puget Sound area. Came here to support Duke. Ball is played upfield. Now it is docking with a flick. Strong header by Darren Olson, kept alive by Nash, rejected by Williamson. Now down the right sideline. Smith trying to avoid the dangerous play and does, but it's picked up by Williamson. Okay, Duke sagging back. Everybody thinking defensively. Zepko gets this ball in the bounce. 5.54 to go in the match. 1-0. Duke looking for their first ever NCAA soccer championship. Off the foot of docking. And now the whistle, but it's out of play. Throwing goes back to Duke on the throw-in. Crowd here, 4,652. And they've seen a physical match. Both teams came to play. No one was tentative in terms of going all out for this one. Both coaches said, we're not satisfied just to be here. We want this. And it was an achievement for both teams just to get this far. Another foul called. Neither team was ranked in the top 10 in a preseason poll, as I recall. Or one of the magazines I looked at had them just beyond that. Ball played into the box, and Fister sweeps it aside. On the left wing sideline, now it's passed once and knocked out by John Kirk. Throw in for Sean Docking. 4.46 to go in regulation time. We'll have overtime if it ends up tied at the end of regulation. Not sudden death, but two overtimes before we get into a sudden death situation. But right now, Duke holding on to their lead. Foul there, though, on the Blue Devils. Nash will leave it for Derek Gaffney. 4.24 to go. We'll continue to watch the clock for you. Played into Roderick Scott, wanting to turn. Has two players right by him, and he just lost it. He was trying to make that move and play it on the cross to the far post, but he was unable to do it. Duke leading it 1-0, smelling that championship. We'll be back. Tom Stone back in the lineup, so is Joey Valenti, Jason Waiter. Coming out, one of a couple players, I didn't see who else came out of there. But two players going to the sidelines for the Blue Devils. As Stone, who has the only goal from Valenti, are back in and trying to work some more magic. On the left wing side, Probst throwing it upfield for Stone. Nice turn, but then he just couldn't quite handle it. 
Number eight was Lennonberger. Not on the right side. I don't see Benedict out there, so presumably he is the man that has gone off. Now it is docking. Wanted it for Scott, but Scott had stopped his run. There's another foul. Yeah, and um, Kelly Weta coming in there to make the tackle. It was a foul, but he was a sweeper. He had to come up there. There was a lot of space in front of him. Now here's a very dangerous situation. Weta coming up. You see him making the tackle, or, or rather the foul. He had left his sweeper position, exposed a lot of ground behind him, and had no choice but to foul. Here's the free kick. Four-man solid wall, and then one player off of it. Struck by Gaffney. Ooh. Good shot. Curling, but over the goalpost, over that crossbar. But he did a nice job bending that ball around. I think Mark Dodd uh, might have had that one had he needed it. Uh, it's flighted around the wall. And Dodd is there, but uh, not all that comfortable, perhaps. Uh, Want to make it exciting for TV, maybe? <laughs> Kelly Wedock sending it long. Cleared back the other way. Right wing. Thought went out of play, but no. Wise moves right there. The entire ball must go out, and it didn't, apparently. Scott has it knocked away. The goalkeeper, Dodd, was way out that time. A good situation for Ackman. And another good one here with a corner kick. And 2.14 to go. Everybody coming back. Zepko coming up to the midfield line right now. There are the goalkeeper. Ball played in. It's headed straight up. But Dodd is there. Dodd will hold on. And he's telling everybody, go forward. Zepko that time. Sheamus on that uh, corner kick came all the way up to that midfield line. Well, they had all the rest of the players uh, committed into the penalty area. And they just given the ball away, Duke, is at this point. So what they really need to do is just sort of take... Oh, here's That's a bad back want. pass. Ooh. Yeah, slow, slow yeah. pass back. Chef Messing used to call that a hospital ball for obvious reasons. Ball played down to Robert Scott. Does the turn to the outside. Less than a minute and a half to go. one nothing for Duke. Looking for Turnbull. It's headed in. It's loose. Smack too high. The volley just getting yeah. underneath it. Pat Nash. Nash. Yeah. Well, that's a last uh, last minute kind of shot. A tired player who's played 88 to 89 minutes of tough soccer, and uh, you know it's awfully hard to execute those half chances He's in the last minute. Local player from Akron, and he'll be back. He's just a junior. Less than a minute to go. Well, Duke just wants to play this one out. They'll be happy to just bring a few passes together, knock it long, and uh, hope to. Not really let Akron get one last raid. Headed by Harper. Now to the far side. Joy Valenti is there. He's had a nice game today. Ball played upfield for Scott. Cleared away. Right near the midfield line. Smith. Sending it. Upfield right side. Anderson. One times it. It's blocked. Straight up it goes. Wedock heads it, but not out of danger. Everson a drive, and that's why. Leisman had his flag up, though. Corner I, kick. I thought he was going to call it offside. There's a corner kick coming up. 18 seconds unofficially. And it's going to be struck by Wells. Wells sending it. Far side headed by Turnbull, but it goes wide. And that was perhaps the last chance. Five seconds left. The Duke players already celebrating. They know that the championship trophy will go to Durham, North Carolina. So the Blue Devils of Duke and John Rennie have themselves an NCAA National Championship. Some of the fans celebrating. That is not rugby down in the field. But it looks like it, but those are just some happy people from Duke University. Well, the first player John Rennie went out to was Mark Dodd because he knows how important a good goalkeeper is. But I think uh, if he uh, tripped over the, the body of uh, Kelly Weddock on the way to him, he might have well have stopped there because Weddock was the man of the hour for the Duke defense. Steve Parker telling his troops that they did a nice job, and they did. But there's a big embrace. The man, the happiest man, is the coach, John Rennie. Final score in the championship game, Duke takes the crown by beating Akron 1-0. Sheamus and I will return in just a moment.